Okay, okay let me let me let yeah. me just bring up the article. Hold on, Steve. Just, let me just bring well, it up. I got Steve it. segued to this, and we didn't yeah, set it up. We weren't we weren't going to this <laughs> oh. first, but we're going to it now, and that's okay. That's okay. Sorry. No, no, Sorry. it's fine. Why women don't belong at the Olympics? Opinion. Star sports. Why women's hockey doesn't belong at the. Olympics. Sorry, women's hockey, not yes. women. <laughs> not women. Can you now, imagine? Now the old. would have got ratioed harder. Just so you know, the trope is they're so good. Mm -hmm. What's the point? It's not doing anything for the sport. And I'll read you the, the, right. the opening line. Through two uh, group stage games, the Canadian women's hockey team has outscored its opposition 23-2 to and outshot them 118-44. to That's not sports. That's abomination domination. <laughs> Which, by the way, I'm into that sex position. But I, I just want to say that... Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't even know what that is. I just, I just think it's a... It's a, it's an old art. It's an old thing, Steve. I, obviously, you have something you want to say on it, and then we can move on because no one cares. Oh yeah, like well, people do care, and I just find it amazing, um, refreshing even that people still have the capacity to get mad at anything Rosie Demano has to say. Um, you know, she's been around for a long time. I saw some people defending her as, you know, you don't have to agree with her, but you do have to respect her. And how about this? No, I don't. She's legitimately a bad writer. I don't give a shit about anything she has to say. No one does. She wrote an article that on Twitter got 23 retweets, 88 likes, and 2,141 quote tweets. She could have wrote an article promoting cannibalism that would have been more popular than that. Dude, hang them up. Put the pen away. No more keyboard for you. Brutal. You stink. <laughs> look at look at the replies from Omar. This is truly and unbelievably wrong. Dom decision just says shut up. Mm -hmm. And it got 2000 likes. <laughs> Dude, the opinion stop. that I'm most interested in uh finding out about is Chris Johnston's. Because that's a coworker of hers and I'm interested in seeing how how an article like this gets the thumbs up? Does Rosie Demano get like carte blanche? Hey, you want to write something? We just publish it no matter what. Or is and he the can the editorial staff look at this and in the future they probably should and say, hey, we're pro mm. we're not going to publish this because this isn't it. This isn't the direction we should go as a paper. Well, see, he works know, there. CJ so has. So he agrees. <laughs> CJ disagrees with the article, and well, he's clearly. gonna he's gonna talk about it today on the CJ show, and I haven't had the opportunity to hear it yet. But I want to know if like well, if that's if that's the um, if that's how it goes with writing articles at Star. So Sports. it's it's interesting that you bring that up, Jesse, because I think there is an important distinction that CJ may or may not make, and maybe this isn't my place to make it. But he, technically speaking, is Chris Johnson, whose work appears. In mm -hmm. the Toronto Star. He's not Chris Johnson of the Toronto Star. Yeah. Difference, right? So he wouldn't be in that newsroom. And by the way, it's been COVID, so it's not like anybody's been in any newsroom lately. It's all on, on Zoom. That's fair. But I would say that that he may not know the answer to that because <laughs> it's he's he's the artist formerly known as Prince, right? He's not uh he's not necessarily in um in Prince's band. So I'm not really sure if I'm I'm not sure what he's gonna say, yeah. but I know he'll probably go after the take because it's the dumbest take. But I've, <laughs> here's the thing. I remember this, this, this opinion coming up right after Nagano. Uh, yes. And it's funny because, you know, Canadian women absolutely dominated Nagano and then lost a heartbreaker uh, in the final. It was such a bummer. Such, the Nagano games for Team Canada were a bummer because, uh, like, we lose in a shootout to Dominic Hasek, who was unbelievable on the men's side, so and good. then just didn't even show up for the bronze medal game. Like, just didn't even care. Um, and then the, on the women's side, that team was so unbelievably good and special and they just didn't have it in the, in the finals. It just happens, right? The American team was amazing and had a whole bunch of stars on it. And I think it, it's just, it's just what happens. And so after that, you saw some drops of that argument coming in where you really started to see it with Salt Lake mm -hmm. when both men and women, uh, completely just you know, it let knife through butter in that tournament. And, you know, I, I, I think it's an old trope. It's lazy. And I think that Rosie, uh, Rosie loved every one of your quote tweets, by the way. She loved every one of your replies. She loved every hit that you gave that website. And here's what I want to suggest. Steve, Steve nailed it. Who cares what Rosie DeMano has to say? I'm shocked that people still care. That's what I meant by who cares. It's Rosie DeMano. But I, I think... I want to use the hashtag who cares it's Rosie DeMano almost because it's like <laughs> it's, it's a bit too long. Don't don't. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we can work on it with the social media team that we have. 
But my thinking is, if every time you quote tweet this and say, this is repulsive or this is stupid or whatever, I get the outrage, but you're also sharing it. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, I, yeah. I and, and like, and you're outraging more people. And I don't know, I like, she's, she, it's Rosie D'Amato. Like she's not on your team. And she, does he, do these opinions need to go away? Yes. Um, but she is a, her whole thing is she likes to be a, prov a provocateur. She likes to say shit that just pisses people off. It's not like she actually, I don't know if she believes anything that she writes. Right. I think it's just more like, I feel like causing shit today. We have other journalists in the city that do that. Are we hypocrites by starting a podcast with her article? Because then her article worked. Uh, I, certainly. Certainly. But I feel like it was a big enough article that we sort of had to cover it. Yeah, right? so if, if it was a big enough, big enough thing on Twitter, I'm going to quote tweet yeah, it. You're, no, no, you're right. You're, you're, right. Right. you're right. It's a subscription-based newspaper. Yeah. This, this doesn't do anything for them. Is anyone like, oh, I'm going to sign up so I can hate read this shit? No, <laughs> I don't know, man. I signed up for um, the star once and hate read a Dave Festchuk article and then tried to, because I was trying to use it for the show, and then I tried to cancel my subscription. I was like, sorry, sir, you've already paid for the entire year. I'm like, I want it canceled. They're like, okay, but you'll still be able to use it for the entire year. <laughs> so, yeah, well, thanks. And now I have but a subscription here. again, but it was, yeah, I think some people might, but very few, very here, few. I, I, I just want to read an excerpt, if, if I can. Yeah. Oh, tr trust me on this. Yeah. Uh, athletes and their coaching tutors often speak about striving for a personal best. Usually this is an indication that they can't beat anyone else, but sometimes infrequently, it means the competitor is in a league of his or her own. This can be viewed as a remarkable achievement or with no one around to offer the, a challenge as a pretty lousy, uh, as pretty lousy entertainment. Oh guys, I made a mistake. This is Rosie DeMano from April 6th, 1997. Um, <laughs> writing about uh, women's hockey, and the title is "Women's Hockey Isn't Ready for Prime Time Just Yet." <sighs> you want to talk about lazy? She's had the exact same thought in her head for twenty three years, twenty five years. Shut up! It's lazy. It's lazy. The and number they... one song on the Billboard when she wrote that was "Can't Nobody Hold Me Down" by Puff Daddy, and nobody He's changed did. his name three times since she came up with that. Nobody. Wanna be by Spice Girls was before that. Shut up. Jesse, you stink. Mbop the... by Hanson is on there. 1997. Eat. Get a new shtick. What else you got on Ooh. the Billboard charts? <laughs> I can do it. Is Mambo number five there? Unbreak My Heart by Tony Braxton. Oh, big tune. Good song. Ooh, big tune. It's your no, right the no. Chest. Mambo number five was was. That is that 99? Is that later? Anyway, it so. doesn't Mo, matter. Mo the, Money, More Problems by uh, Notorious B.I.G. The the problem here, guys, is that. Uh, you know, we, we we say we sit back and we say, who cares what Rosie DeMano thinks? There are plenty of people, whether or not you care about what Rosie DeMano thinks, there's plenty of people who feel attacked by this because hmm. it's a journalist and a, a, a storied publication in this country. And we're talking about our national sport. Sorry, lacrosse, but you're not. You're talking about our national sport. You're talking about women who are fighting for recognition. And who cares if Rosie DeMano is a woman or a man? When the Toronto Star publishes an article like that, people are going to go nuts. What I don't like about it is that they knew that. I knew, like, they knew that Rosie was going to cause a bunch of shit. Rosie knew she was going to cause a bunch of shit. And my question is, for what? What do we gain from this? Does this add to the discourse? Like, listen, if you don't like women's hockey in the Olympics, here's a suggestion. Write an article on what Germany did with their program 20 years ago. To improve things. How about instead of women's hockey doesn't belong in the Olympics, here's how to improve your hockey program and then do some real journalism, call them, do some interviews and say, hey, you guys are really picking up steam and you're not getting walked every tournament like you used to. How did you do that? That's real journalism. Uh -huh. eh. The that, women's game this tournament that. has actually been a little compelling for me because uh, I didn't expect much from the Chinese team, and they knocked off Sweden the other night, two nights ago, in a great crazy. game. And I was like, look at these talented women play. Yes. Ah, yes. It's been great hockey. So, and it's a shame somebody would go out and write an article like this. And the PWHBA responded in indirectly to the article with a, a tweet that said, with yesterday's take on women's hockey in the Olympics driving traffic to negative women's hockey coverage, we propose a thread of great takes instead. Let's give the women hockey media some love and drop your favorite article here. 
So they have a whole thread there of just great women's hockey articles and writers and people writing about the sport. And that's how you combat stuff like that. This. Is you come perfect. back with positivity. We said at the beginning of the show, Steve is not positive, but here's some positive. <laughs> here's some a positive take on this. And I think the PWHP nailed, nailed it. it by just promoting more great women's hockey content. Yeah. And that's how you, you got to keep I, combating this. I, I feel like today's generation has better words for things like this because. Because we might say, oh, she's a devil's advocate or she's a contrarian. No, no. She's an edgelord. Shut yeah. up. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like you've made your... Shut up, this edgelord. Is the, this is the thing. That's why... Go go look up... Like, they've done research study into contrarian contrarianism. And they've done a, a bunch of them. And, and it's such no, a... No, they late... haven't. <laughs> it's so exactly it's so lazy yeah. there's so many people in sports getting by on just being contrarians rather than hey here's another idea i just gave rosie damano a perfect article that she could have written going you know what more women's hockey programs need to be like team germany okay tell me how i might i might actually read that and and, and that's this is the thing so if you felt attacked by it i get it it's the toronto star it's a it's a newspaper that I don't care where you stand politically, like the Globe, like the National Post, like even the Toronto Sun, storied and deserving of some respect just based on the fact that they've been around forever. Writing an article like this, I would expect it in a tabloid. I would expect it on a regressive online blog. I don't expect that from the Toronto Star. And frankly, Rosie, man, you got to do some work. I know you're nearing the end of your career, but this is this is lazy mail it in uh, bullshit why start now why why start oh now? my god it's just painful anyway enough Ooh, of this tomato 